Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and today we're continuing our first look at the Dutch cruiser line as we move on up to Tier 9's Johan de Witt. Now, Johan is arguably, maybe tied with Harlem, for one of the easiest to pronounce Dutch cruisers in the line, which automatically makes it one of my favorite. But there's a lot of other things to like about this ship. Some of the comments I've been reading kind of on the Harlem review, uh, the Harlem first look, I should say, it's not a review, um, makes me think that there's some people that actually kind of, the high end of the Dutch line looks a little intriguing, and I have to agree. And in my opinion, Johan de Witt here kind of continues that. Now, one of the things that I want to point out, right, Tier 8 is a very, very, very busy place for cruisers. Like we said, with Harlem, Harlem and De Zeve Provincia come in as like the 27th and 28th Tier 8 light cruisers. When it comes to Tier 9, there's a lot less choice. There's only, let's see, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16 cruisers at Tier 8. I'm sorry, it's at Tier 9. There are only 16 Tier 9 cruisers, and only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of those are premiums. So there's not nearly as much competition up here, and it helps Johan de Witt stand out a little bit, and we're going to talk about why that is as we kind of talk through the ship. So... Let's start, as we tend to, with survivability. 45,900 hit points is pretty robust for a Tier 9 cruiser. At the same time, it doesn't really set her apart from the pack at all. Um, for many, many moons, Rune was kind of like the highest health Tier 9 cruiser until, you know, Kronstadt came along um, and kind of broke the game, <laughs> broke the mold <laughs> at Tier 9. You know, and you've got a fair number of super cruisers in this tier, right? Tier 9 is the first tier where you really start to find that that line between cruiser and super slash battle cruiser really getting blurred, right? You've got Siegfried, Iger, Ajima, Alaska, and Kronstadt in this tier, all of whom clock in at basically 60,000 HP on up. But for a regular, you know, heavy cruiser, and Johan is not quite a regular heavy cruiser, we'll talk about that in a minute, 45, 46,000 hit points essentially, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty solid there, not too shabby. Torpedo protection, 19%. Nothing to get excited about here. Um, the, the German super cruisers at this tier kind of run away with best in tier, 37%. Kronstadt, 34 Most of the traditional standard heavy cruisers you find in the tech tree, uh, the Brindisees, Drake, that kind of thing, have about 22. Johan, San Luis here have 19. The Americans on the extreme low end with basically nothing, you're looking at 4%. So this is not bad, but it's not best in tier. Armor. Let's have a check over the armor of this ship. Looks like we've probably got what we got up here on the 25 millimeters on the bow with a 40 millimeter bow streak. If you've played Harlem down at tier eight, you're familiar with that scheme. Uh, let me turn off the torpedo bulge. 225 millimeter belt. This is, I mean, it's not quite best in tier, but literally by only a handful of millimeters is this not best in tier. Um, Alaska comes in at 229. Kronstadt best that barely at 230. So there's a lot of, there aren't many other cruisers that have this kind of protection. Just like we saw in Harlem, you've moved up to now the Dutch, you know, all these light cruisers, we crossed the barrier at tier eight to heavy cruiser, and now the Dutch really invest in protecting these ships. Now, one of the things, I don't know, I have to put some testing through this or look at some penetration numbers. I'm, I'm not an expert on these things off the top of my head, but I know from playing, for example, a rune, a rune essentially cannot brought, cannot full pen or cannot penetrate can't Citadel, that's what I'm trying to get out, um, a Kronstadt at uh, almost point-blank range when she's broadside. The, the shells just don't have the pen to get through all that Kronstadt belt armor. There's a part of me that wonders uh, if similar occurrences will happen here with um, with Johann de Witt's belt, because it's only five millimeters thinner than Kronstadt. It really, this belt, I mean, this belt is not going to protect you from battleships, but it definitely gives you a leg up in engagements against other heavy cruisers. So that's kind of noteworthy. Um... Deck armor through the middle of the ship, 30 millimeters and 40 millimeters in the casemate. So the armor scheme, very, very similar to what we saw over with, um, over down at tier eight with Harlem, still with the 25 millimeter turtleback. You should be used to that if you're played at Harlem. And then of course, we'll turn the casemate off and have a look at the Citadel. And just like Harlem, you're looking at a Citadel. You know, so many of the low tier Dutch cruisers have that crazy long Citadel. Johan de Witt does not suffer from this, just like Harlem. Basically, you're looking for magazine, forward magazine to aft magazine. It is fairly low in the water. Doesn't really extend above the waterline. Maybe a little bit. It's hard that you can't really get an angle. I mean, it probably extends above the waterline a little bit, but not significant. Not so much that it's catastrophic. And of course, just like Harlem, you've got this significant gap in here between the torpedo bulge 
and you know underneath the uh, the the, uh, the turtleback section where there's a huge hole in here that they've got to get through all of that plus the angle plus the torpedo the uh, citadel bulkhead etc etc. In theory, this ought to be a decently difficult ship to citadel um, when she's brawling at range. It, you know the German armor schemes that are similar to this. At range, you can plunge shells through the deck. I think Johann David is going to suffer from that problem, but at closer ranges, she ought to be fairly robust. So that's nice to see. Maneuverability and concealment, 32 knots and change, basically. 740 meters in the turning circle, 11.9 on the rudder shift. This is not anything to get excited about. 32 knots is basically worst in tier. She, this is the slowest tier 9 cruiser in World of Warships. And that's going to feel really bad when you look at that with her range in a minute. Her main battery range is nothing to get excited about either. So low speed, low main battery range means that once this ship gets where it's going, it's... It, you, Kind of have to approach positioning this cruiser, in my mind, very similar to the way you'd position a battleship, in the sense of you're probably not going to get around, you're not going to get around the map very quickly. Once you're on a flank, that's your flank. The odds of you repositioning in a meaningful manner over the course of a match are very, very slim. 740 on the turning circle, um, pretty comparable to, say, San Luis. Um, speed and, and turning circle, actually pretty comparable to San Luis. Rudder shift, far worse, far worse. 11.9 is not worse in tier, um, but it is arguably worst of the quote-unquote traditional heavy cruisers in this tier. In other words, it, the super cruiser rudder shifts, you know, as, again, Azuma, Siegfried, Iger, Alaska, Kronstadt are all worse than this, but um, they're bigger, they have bigger guns, they have more health. Of the of the remaining cruisers, Johan de Witt is the worst. This is not a ship that's going to handle well. Um, you're going to have to learn how to position her smart um, and, uh, and, and hopefully use that armor scheme to, to keep from getting blapped, right? Because once she starts to turn, once she maneuvers, uh, she's going to be doing that for a bit. She's not that fast. Surface detection, 12.7 kilometers. Um, again, you know, putting her up next to her contemporaries in the traditional heavy cruiser role, this is not worse than tier. Buffalo is worse than this. San Luis is worse than this. Rune is worse than this, right? Um, Riga, Donskoy, both worse than this. All of the super cruisers, worse than this. So it's not amazing. Now, she's not super stealthy either, right? Drake beats her out. Um, Abuki beats her out. That sort of thing. But a full stealth rig on this ship gets you down to 10 flat. That's not bad, really. Um, that's not too shabby. It's it's noteworthy, right? Like, this ship does have some things going for it in the stealth department. Um, aerial detection, 8.7. Kind of on the high end. But you start to find, you know, we, we made a point of talking about down at Tier 8, Harlem, one of, the, one of the few Tier 8 cruisers that her AA range does not match her aerial detection range. Johan de Witt also suffering from this problem, but it is a little more common at Tier 9, so it's not such a huge strike against the ship as you might, as, as it really is at Tier 8. Like, at Tier 8, it stands out like a sore thumb. At Tier 9, it's not that abnormal. Again, most of the supercruisers have this problem. Several of the Tech Tree ships have this problem. I'm looking at you, say, Buffalo... Drake, um, Brindisi, right? Um, Johan de Witt has this problem, of course. So, yeah, like, it's just, you know, it's 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 not that abnormal. It's not that abnormal. Um, so, yeah, let's have a look at a... Uh, let's do a defense next, because we're talking about aerial detection on the surface. We'll kind of mix things up. Now, just like um, we talked about with Harlem, the AA defense here is actually quite good. You have a six-kilometer outer ring, seven flak puffs in that ring. Hang on a minute, let me scroll to the right here spreadsheet lined up so I can see what I'm talking about. There we go. So you've got seven puffs in that ring, and then um, continuous damage in that ring is pretty good. 165 continuous damage in that outer ring. Again, not best in tier, but you're right behind Neptune. Like, Neptune and Ajima basically knock you out, but it's really good. It certainly is, it's, it's just like, this is noteworthy. And then Harlem's middle ring, if you remember, was not anything to write home about. This is not a problem that Johan de Witt suffers. 500 DPS in that middle ring is absolutely best in tier. Crushes even the super cruisers. Even Alaska doesn't have this kind of power out of her middle AA ring. So Johan de Witt is, is arguably the best AA cruiser in tier 9. Um... I'm not sure that I would I would definitively say that without playing the ship and trying it out on my own to get the feel for it, but she's like a carrier that tries to attack this ship is going to know they've been in a fight. Let's just put it that way. Between the amount of flak you put up, which is a little above average, and this incredibly punishing middle ring, anybody who tries to push home a strike's not going to go home with much. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, lots of things to like out of the AA here. Main battery. Let's talk about this for a minute. Now, 
Johan, I'm sorry, uh, Harlem, that's your eight. Traditional heavy cruiser battery, battery 203 millimeter guns. At Johan David here, we move up to 240 millimeter guns. Now, the only other 240 millimeter ship in the game that I'm aware of, that strikes my memory, is tier 10 French cruiser Henri Catherine. Um, so this is, you know, these are the same diameter guns as Henri Catherine, but they are not Henri's guns. Let's talk about what's different. If you're used to firing Henri, you're, there's probably some expectations of these shells and these guns. Let's talk about what you're going to find different. One, Johan de Witt's shell velocity is higher. That means that these guns should be more comfortable to fire at longer ranges. That's nice. The problem is Johan de Witt doesn't really have a lot of range. 16 kilometer main battery range is just flat out terrible. Absolutely terrible. She is not the shortest ranged heavy cruiser in tier nine. Um, again, you know, Buffalo, Drake have, you know, have shorter ranges, but man, yikes, yikes. This is, this is going to be a bit of a tough ship to play to manage this main battery with this short of a range. The reload time is also not anything to get excited about. A fully buffed Henri, when you put um, MBM uh, main battery upgrade, main battery modification three in upgrade slot six, can get her reload down to like 11 and change, 11 seconds. And, and so you see here, Johan de Witt's base reload is 17. When you put in that MBM3, 15 second reloads is as fast as you can get on this ship. So her, her overall DPM is like not amazing. Again, we this is, this, is, this is a theme you see amongst the Dutch cruisers, right? That the overall DPM is intentionally on the low side. Now there's a part of me that wonders if that's, uh, intentional while we're testing the ship and they, they maybe plan to buff these a little bit to bring them up later. I think what we're seeing, I'm speculating, I think what we're seeing is Wargaming intentionally keeping the main battery held back a little bit while they judge the impact, viability, damage potential of the airstrikes. You know, the Dutch cruisers are the first ships coming to the game with this airstrike ability. I think they're very, they're being very cautious about the power that they in power that they ascribe to that airstrike the abilities that they that it has and then if they decide later on look the airstrikes just aren't hurting enough or they're not they're too hard to use or whatever they'll they have the ability to kind of maybe bring the main battery up a little bit give them you know prove that reload speed give them a little more dpm and kind of bring them up to up to snuff a little bit but johan de Witt's main battery like this this is this is not a main a, not a bad ship but that 15 second reload is a little punishing if you're used to playing, let's say, uh, Brindisi, right, you're, you know what I'm talking about, right? Brindisi is a great ship, but the main battery reload just feels a little unnecessarily punishing. And Brindisi has more barrels than this, right? But in, with that SAP, like, Brindisi can land really good hits. And I'm sure Johan Witt can as well, but, mm, yeah. One other thing I want to, one other big change I want to point out, and one minor change from Henri's battery since we're trying to kind of compare Henri Catherine's main guns to these guns, the fire chance on the shells. Henri's fire chance is up over 20%. I forget what the base is. Uh, I checked a minute ago on my ship. It was 25, but that's probably with like, you know, flags and stuff. So it's probably like 23 or something. Um, you see here, Johan de Witt's 20%. So it's the same HE shell damage as Henri Catherine, but it is, a, I think, a I believe it's to be, I believe it's a lower fire chance. And then the AP damage. Henri Catherine gets a little bit higher. That is a 6,200 uh, 6, AP damage per shell here on Johan de Witt, only 6,100. So, not too shabby. Like, the main battery is not anything to, to complain about, but until I play the ship, I'm a little hesitant to, to, to say, oh, this is a great main battery, right? Again, I, I also kind of want to point out that 183, that 183 meter maximum dispersion on this kind of range is really bad. The size of that dispersion ellipse for this range is really, really bad. I'll give you an example. Buffalo, I'm sorry, let's use, let's use Buffalo. Buffalo and Drake both have comparable ranges to this ship. Their dispersion ellipse is about 140 meters. So this dispersion ellipse is like 25-ish eh, percent larger, um, you know, almost 25-ish percent larger than than maybe it quote unquote should be. Um, and again, I think they're trying to they're trying to keep the main battery in check a bit while they balance the rest of the ship. We'll see. That's speculative. Okay. Let's talk about that airstrike. 
airstrike here two 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 available flights which means you get two you can you can launch two at a time they're on a hundred second reload you're putting up 10 planes six bombs in each 6100 bomb damage this is a this is a tick up now this is getting a little a little higher than we saw at tier 8 6100 damage per bomb 36 millimeters of penetration 35 percent fire chance i'm going to put up the table again so you guys can see the progression of the bomb so you can see here that we are progressing a little a little worse a little worse it's a little worse for the opponent it's a little better for you the the the, the cruiser driver um than it was at tier eight the potential damage goes up a smidge and and everything and it's 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 not too shabby um the difference is, you know, you still got, you're still on that 100 second reload. Bomb damage goes up, a little more fire, a little more penetration, and we're not done yet because it's going to ramp up again one more time when we get to tier 10. So you're putting 60 bombs into each reticle, and there's a lot of potential damage in there. But again, I'm I'm still not sold that this airstrike is going to be really really useful against you know stationary ships, uh, camping ships. That's like it's trying to lead it against moving targets is really challenging. Like I've watched people try to do it. Um, you know, watching over their shoulder when I've seen people testing the ship, I can't, I'm not, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't, no one out there has videos of this, right? But it just looks really challenging. Like you just don't see it happening a lot against ships that are moving it. And it's anything like the, um, the, um, uh, the ones we were testing for the battleship ASW patrols, which appears to be the same kind of mechanic, that's very challenging to lead. So, yeah, I'm, I understand why people are concerned about this airstrike ability, but so far it seems to just be more of a deterrent. Like when there's a Dutch cruiser in the game, people are like, oh, I can't sit still. Well, that's not such a bad thing, but it does mean that it almost feels like the main battery is kind of undertuned because the airstrike ability is of much more limited value once people know your gimmick, right? So I don't know. We'll see. A lot of testing still to go. Um, they're not done with this yet. Let's look at consumables real quick before we get out of here. Same suite of consumables as Harlem uh, down at Tier 8. You've got a DCP, a standard Tier 9 uh, Cruiser Hydro, Defensive Fire, and a standard Heal. Now, I want to point out something here, and this was something that I missed. Someone had to point out to me on the Harlem review. That Heal only has a 40-second reload. That's actually really interesting. Um, so she's going to heal for 28 seconds and have a 40-second uh, cooldown on that heal. Harlem had this as well. Presumably, uh, Gauden Liu does at Tier 10. We'll have a look at that in the next video. But that's interesting because it means that um, she can get more use out of this heal. It means that superintendent skill on this captain is a little more valuable depending on the, 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 the trouble you get your ship into. You're more likely to have the ability to get that extra heal off. Um, and then lastly, uh, Johan de Vitt here does come with air aircraft facilities. She gets a choice between spotter and fighter. For me, between the defensive fire and her A, I feel like the fighter is a giant waste of time. However, given her main battery range, this spotter aircraft is going to be really, really, really handy in the right situation. So this is my recommendation when you start playing the ship. Um, I just, like, her A is brutally punishing. I cannot see the fighter being all that useful. But, uh, but that spotting aircraft will definitely come in handy. So yeah, guys, there we go. That's our first look at Johan de Vitt. I'm... I'm curious to try this ship. As someone who's a huge fan of Rune, I, I, and there's so many really good Tier 9 cruisers, it, this ship on paper feels like it's it's bringing something different to Tier 9. I am concerned that her main battery is undertuned right now. It feels to me like it is because I'm not convinced that the airstrike is the amazing, you know, Zomig ability that everybody seems to be freaked out about. I'm not convinced that that ability is as awesome as, as, as it is purports to be and it feels like right now to carry that ability um Johanna Vick gives up a lot of main battery firepower in order to carry that airstrike and I'm not convinced yet that that is that is a great trade so we'll see as the ship comes through super testing war game we'll make some tweaks and we'll have a look at her when she comes to live in the meantime guys hope you enjoyed that wash your hands be safe and I'll catch you next time